Welcome everyone, this is the MKAU Show, Season 3, Episode 5. My name is Fletcher. Introducing everyone in no particular order, we got Brash Rackhams, we got Distracted, Hi. Boss Man Sub-Zero, and we've also got Juddy, Lord Sorry. of Empty Shelves. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about a couple of different topics. We're going to be talking about the Mortal Kombat movie, what we liked, what we didn't like, just first impressions. Uh, we're going to be talking about like some of the Sony stores shutting down that now apparently it's not going to be shutting down games that may potentially be hitting E3 or not hitting E3. So, and just shaky launches in general, because we've got rust, we've got the resident evil multiplayer game that don't, doesn't want to even make it to store, but I guess brash is going to fill us in with that. But I guess the best thing to start with would just be the Mortal Kombat movie. It's the most exciting thing to happen in gaming in the last week and a half. No, Yep. What's everyone's thoughts on it? I think I we start. We should start with Sub Zero. Oh, well, I was going to say we'll start with Kurt because Kurt had the honour to interview. I was there, but Kurt had the mm-hmm. honour to interview um, CC Stringer, which plays Molina. He's got a nice little poster he stole from the in- from the interview oh, room back there. So, uh, <laughs> Kurt, Kurt's seen it as well, obviously. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly have. Talk about it. Let's go, boy. Um, yeah, it was good. Nice. And Brashy, yeah, what do you I, think? I, I, right. yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, um, look, I, um, I've had a lot of people ask me about, uh, you know, was it better than the original? Uh, you know, how good was it, et cetera, et cetera, because that's what they do. I'm torn in whenever somebody asks me that question, is it better than the original? I always love the original. Um, Annihilation sucked and it shouldn't exist. Um, but this one, they've, they've, I think it's on par with, awesomeness with the original but um just they've taken it one step better and um josh lawson uh <laughs> says that kano i think kano would have to i think he stole the show um and look and and after uh you know as an aussie you know he's he's really put us on the map now um but the fact that the movie was done here in aussie aussie land um I don't know. It's 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 great for great for the Australian you know cinema over here to be able to bring out probably oh, one of my favourite movies of all time now, and um, having the opportunity to speak to CC and interview her, which we will I guess we'll put a link somewhere with this podcast for that uh, yeah. interview as well. Um, look, CC who plays Melina in in the. In the movie, in the movie, Melina is a badass. Plain and simple. In the, well, in the in Mortal Kombat, she's a badass. Um, CC just suited that role. Um, so I, yeah. It, it, if you listen to the interview, you'll you'll see what I mean. Um, but I think overall, look, the the Easter eggs in it were insane. Um, having fallen back to the original storyline whereas uh for anybody who would have seen you know the 1995 original look i'll try not to give spoilers away because it's not like you've had much time to watch that one um you know you got scorpion and sub zero side by side in that one fighting side by side as as the villains and in this one they've they've gone back to the roots of you know scorpion versus sub zero and which Really, it shouldn't be um, shouldn't be all about a tournament. It should just be Mortal Kombat, Scorpion vs. Sub Zero. That's what the movie was, really. Um, but look, I love the movie. Um, I've read some reviews and I've seen some ratings, and I think IMDb has got it rated at seven or something at the moment, um, out of ten. Um, and there's a lot. Of, I think a lot of, lot of reviews are being a bit too, maybe a little bit too critical of the movie, maybe. Perhaps, I don't know. Um, or maybe I'm just biased because it's Mortal Kombat. But I'll happily say Annihilation just, yeah, that shouldn't exist. So, uh, look, if you haven't seen it, go and see it. Watch it in the cinema if you, or if you're going to watch it in the cinema, do it now, obviously, while it's in cinemas. If you're going to watch it at home, make sure you get one fucking massive stereo. Like, I've got, I, like, I can't wait to, like, sort of, you know, Play it on mine at home, um, but yeah, it's you've got to have the sound. It's but the actors, 
that did play those parts. Um, I think there was a couple parts that, I don't know, Raiden, um, not that Christopher Lambert was a great pick for Raiden originally, but in my mind, I just keep picturing him as Raiden, so that made it hard for me to go to the newer Raiden. But um, other than that, I, look, I think the casting was done beautifully. And I maybe there were some parts of acting that was a little bit, meh, how's your father type thing, but overall it was just on point. But, what do you think about uh, I, the addition of Cole Young story? <laughs> yeah, look, I I don't know. Um, I went, it's good. It's look, it's great that they've gone that route. I think because it's going to open up the story. It's going to keep that story going longer. And I think they've they've done a smart thing in being able to bring that movie out. They've got an opportunity now to franchise it. Obviously, like your mm -hmm. uh, Lord of the Rings. Um, you know. Pirates and all those that do all those, uh, um, those one, two, three, four, you know, you Fast and Furious mm -hmm. 20 now, isn't it, or something like that? Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, but, yeah, but if, um, I think they've done well and bringing Cole Young as you know, uh, carrying on the Hazashi, um, bloodline, yeah, I was 50 50 with it. Um, I don't know, I, I was a bit against it I sort of only because it, he's not in like it's not the game but um no i think i think looking at it now having some time to mow it over yeah i think they've done it i don't think they've done too much wrong really in, i think that's the most mind. divisive point about all the reviews that i've seen and everyone talking about is the fact that i feel like that is the blend between hollywood and video game storytelling like they put him in which is a traditional storytelling thing he's a He's an average guy. Well, not particularly average. He's still a fighter and stuff like that. But yep. it's a coming of age story about him and then Mortal Kombat stories happening around him. So I feel like that's where they try to blend the two together, which, you know, it is noticeable. Um, it didn't particularly bother me, but some people would just wanted the purest, like purest form of yeah, he no. wasn't in the games. Keep him out. But, yeah, I, th yeah. I, think, I think that's where all the negativity came from was who is this dude? Mm-hmm. Is it a movie that, like, say for me, because I don't play Mortal Kombat or haven't Get out! It, really? Get the fuck out. <laughs> Hang on, let me just disconnect. Let me disconnect. I can walk in and watch it and be like, that was a good movie, or is it something I'm just going to watch and be like, I don't know what the storyline is, or... Is it no, play? no, I, I think they... I think... No, no, I think you'll go in and enjoy it. Like, it's a, it's a, it's a game movie, and you know, like... They're some not, of the hardest movies to it's make. It's not meant through. to be serious yeah. or anything. It's a it's a fun it's a fun movie, and they do explain right off the bat the Sub Zero and Scorpion feud and where it all started. But unfortunately, this movie doesn't go into the tournament side of things too much. It touches on it and what it's about, but it doesn't focus on it as much as what the original movie did. And that was that was another thing that sort of threw me a bit too. Like I say, it was more of Scorpion vs Sub Zero, like yeah. they cut that tournament. You know, like it was still, you know, they got to win the tenth and all this sort of stuff, and that's all well and good. Mm -hmm. And um, but yeah, it wasn't the focus. That was a subplot, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, Cole Young, look, yeah, that that is literally that's the that's Hollywood coming in there. Like, if you have not played the game, which really dead set, come on now. Um, I've played it. <laughs> I just, I'm not like, but look, like, if, if you've not, if even for those who are green to Mortal Kombat and are not really familiar with it and they've just played it sporadically over the years or whatever, um, and you walk into that movie, there's enough, they, the movie does well in, there's enough storyline there. So you get the, you get the gist of what's going on. You got hands in the tank versus they've done, Han. they've done um, a really well presenting it. Like I said, with the Cole Young is a traditional Hollywood story. So, for someone that doesn't follow the games, they can follow that storyline and then everything else. They can, you'll get more value out of it if you recognize some of the Easter eggs, but yes, uh, like some of the stuff meant a lot more for people that play the games, especially with you know specific lines after someone kills someone, they'll say a line that would happen at the end of it around in Mortal Kombat, like uh, you know, yeah. Kano wins, or you know, you fucking I think, I think at one, <laughs> yeah, I think at one stage they literally said brutality, which. I don't think anyone would normally say that, but obviously, you know, this, you know, if someone didn't know anything about Mortal Kombat, they might think, oh, that's a weird thing to say, but 
Yeah. Um, out, outside yeah, of that, it's a good movie. Kind of lame. Yeah. So it's it's like the like you know Marvel films. You know what I mean? Like I haven't read every single comic books uh, comic book line. So you, you've read the main stories and stuff like that. But they bring in other movies and they're just good movies as a core. So you know most people can go see them even if they're not fans of the actual universe. But if you knew more about it, they could show like a specific thing. Like you know, there's one thing in the corner that means so much more to someone else. But yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, Sub Zero, the actor himself. I, I wish I sorry, I should have written it, wrote his name down. But Joe he signed Tesla. on for four. He signed on for four movies in total. So Joe Tesla. Oh, Joe. Yeah. he's he's in. Like, and then you, as long as you keep the core elements there, you can keep switching people in and out because there's that many people that have been in the. I actually, I actually found it funny that they announced that he was on for four more, considering he was killed. Like, obviously, this is not a spoiler-free podcast for it. <laughs> well, but, it's not now. Yeah, we'll, we'll put that but, in the thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll put in the thing, though. But um, mm-hmm. people just, yeah, that's what I'm saying. People with, that follow the games know that no one's really gone. It's such mm-hmm. a complicated story, timelines, mm-hmm. and all sorts of things that they can bring them back. So. Uh. Just, just if, stay away from that that time travel crap. That it won't, it'll, it won't, it won't, it, that won't happen. It'll, that, oh, that, that, it won't that happen. Bloody Avengers time travel, and then the more MK11, um, you know, the the story in MK11, the game, you know, just uh, yeah, they'll go that way. Obviously, to, they have to, yeah. Bring everyone. But yeah, but, no one's really dead, anyway. Is my point. So mm-hmm. they'll come back in another form of Sub Zero. It's people that. No, there's no more than one. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean... What do you reckon about well, this, Brashy? Do you think this is going to get video game movies back on the map? Because it's been a pretty shaky yeah, well, <laughs> history. Actually, just before I did watch more combat, I watched the uh, Monster Hunter movie too. Um, which is, it, it, was, it was good. I have not but heard any good things you, about you, that. You could, you, could, you, could, <laughs> you could definitely feel the Hollywood in it. And like same with Mortal Kombat, you can feel the Hollywood in it with the Cole story. But I don't know I I I, I like the actor for Cole. Mm-hmm. He's um yeah I've seen him in a few TV shows and movies and yeah he's um like as soon as I like saw him as Cole I'm like oh yeah well at least I'm gonna enjoy it no matter what. And then after the movie I was like that I think that was one of the least things that annoyed me. I think the thing that annoyed me the most about it was the Branding of the champions, how all the champions are branded. Ah, uh, yeah, and the uh, yeah, 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 and that's how they get their their special abilities. When like, say, like Sonya's meant to be born from, like a, a like a lineage that has that power, but no, it's apparently because of her Arcana uh, that she got yep. from the brand. She, yeah, got the brand. Look, Mortal Kombat's but, known to change the story up. All the freaking time, anyway. Yeah, I, I, I all think that, the time. That, so it doesn't... branding was because it was just like a, for me, it just seemed like a cop out to try and rush the story of the tournament. I believe they call them a MacGuffin. It's just something that the audience can latch onto so that they can feel like they're, yeah. you know, following the plot or they feel like they're above something. Like that, that's what they're going to look out for, type thing. Instead of it like being Raiden, like gathering all like the world's best fighters, it's I don't know if, you, if you've got the brand, then you're in. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. and if you and, kill someone with the brand, then you're in. <laughs> Raiden seems he seems like a you know real mean bastard too. He didn't like oh, anybody. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like yeah. you can see why he did it to Cole, but I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, he just whereas in the original Raiden was I don't know he was more empathetic, I guess, or he yeah, was hard, he, but he seemed yeah. to care a little bit more. Yeah, he, like like. He, he seemed to care in a way that was like desperation. Like I knew they were desperate, like they're up to the last fight, but he seemed like overly desperate where and easily gave up. And he's like, Oh, these guys won't do it. We're fucking we're doomed. You got it up. Yep. Just go home. We're done. And yeah, it just but um and oh I don't know what it is, but Liu Kang annoyed the shit out of me. Magic like, Mike. Dude, dude was great. dude was jacked. Dude was jacked, and I like, like like as soon as he got into fight mode, I was like, oh yeah, cool. But every scene, I think it was new, every scene he was in, he'd twirl his um, sash. No, no, oh, yeah. he'd just twirl it 
it. And I was like, why are you trying your sash? Don't get like, Johnny like, excited like, about twirling sashes. Push it out way and they're just like going. Oh, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. But, um, yeah. Look, I did. Uh, Kung Lao. Yeah, Kung like, Lao was, yeah, he was yeah, awesome. Yeah, true his teleportation. Oh, that was, I loved it. Yeah. But yes. But that's my only gripe. My, my, my main gripe is how they delivered the tournament part of it. Mm-hmm. Well, what the lack of. It. And is it just me? Or is Goro, like, looks like Ed Boon? <laughs> I don't know. I have to look. Yeah. Like, if you, I, I swear to bit. God, his, they've modelled his face off Ed Boon. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but I swear to God that's... <laughs> they've taken <laughs> Ed Boon and thrown him... Yeah, that's Goro's face. See, so. the Goro thing, the the Goro thing, thing was... The Goro thing was disappointing because he's supposed to be this big prince thing and he gets he gets taken out by some random new kid. Yeah. Yep. Instead of getting nut punched by Johnny Cage and pushed off the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least that, was, that was entertaining though. I probably would have preferred that. <laughs> and then I think and then I and then I think some of the other characters just weren't in it enough. Like Yeah. Melina, she was so good. Melina, uh, I think. Um, Melina, yeah, she should have been in, in like in so much more of it. Yeah, like, there's I, a, I, yeah. I like her with the hunter, but really, Melina should have been. You got the main characters, like main players in there. Like, I mean, yeah, like you got Melina, who really wasn't in it enough at all. And uh, look, you could probably count her the amount of lines she had on. on two hands you know it's it's really she had a smaller part than what i i think she deserved um and then you've got other characters like reiko <sighs> look he's really didn't need to i don't even think he needed to be there for more no, i don't think uh, he needed to be in there either yeah, same with Natara, whatever her name is Natara didn't need to be there um but, but uh i suppose they probably just needed to kill people like that like yeah people I so like I wouldn't see you throw random people that no one's going to care about at in there. That's a good point. So yeah, they probably put them in there to kill off people they don't care too much about instead of killing off main characters. Mortal Kombat's got so many characters that that have been and gone over the years that haven't hung around because they weren't popular characters. Mm. Well, see, so, this is getting to the spoiler territory, but like as I call it, the cage wall of Easter eggs. Like you saw Kotal Khan there, and then you also saw Nightwolf. Yes. Yeah. So what? So does that mean Nightwolf's never going to be in it now because he's from way back in the day from the old Mortal Kombat? No, this is where they'll bring the timelines in and bring him in from other. Yeah, from, from they'll bring what's her name in crime. They'll, have, sort of... they'll have to bring him in from other time periods to help with the tournament. Mm. Yeah, so that, that's yeah. what will happen. Well, speaking of, of that, and especially with Johnny Cage and stuff like that, and trying to cram all the characters together, because I know they specifically said that they wanted to separate Kano and Johnny Cage because having both of those personalities in the film would be <laughs> oh, like, no, not hard to swallow. But I mean, Kano really got a chance to shine here, and now he's gone. And now yeah. they're going to bring in Johnny Cage, who is rumored to be Ryan Reynolds or The Miz from WWE. I hope so. Right. Yeah, Kurt, if you oh. haven't seen it, look at Ryan Reynolds' Twitter. He posted yeah. a, a yeah. him. Uh, yeah, Ryan Reynolds is looking Johnny like Cage. Well, Johnny Cage. It just looks moving, legit. Moving forward, like, what were you? What would be your wishes for the next movies? Do you want it to be a smaller cast and more fights with them, like more recurring things? Because in this movie, everyone had their characters, and then they kind of fought once, and then that was really it. It's not like, uh, like you know, Sub Zero and, and Scorpion. They were in there twice which is good uh like you know as in together but would you want it to be a more focused story on smaller characters so they can get more out of them or would you rather just let's just make the next movie a massive tournament and just throw 20 people in yeah there? i reckon they're going to focus more on the tournament now to be honest unless they i'd like to see that unless what they do is they'll keep touching on characters backstories and then tournament <laughs> backstory tournament just like they did in the first one maybe that's what they'll do but yeah mm. i don't know is that because i mean they've got i mean like the actor for sub-zero is not signed for four movies but you got the potential for having another a sequel and then you can have a spin-off which could be the first mortal Kombat tournament uh you know once people are getting into swing of things and this is the universe that they're trying to create 
because you know it's, there's potential for solo movies you know people going off doing their own things and stuff like that as a like this movie itself wasn't on the tournament it was just on the universe yeah so, I, I think i think they may use the animated movies as spin-offs like they did with scorpion's revenge I would, i'd like to see them yep. do that more with the characters yep and leave the movies to mm -hmm. the franchise the tournaments and stuff because it's just so much to pull from there's yeah. <laughs> limitless but, movies and ideas that you could do that scorpion's revenge was really good yeah oh, that, that was so good but um which is essentially what the start of the movie was about anyway well yeah it's, it's exactly pretty, the same much so, yeah, instead of them all coming together at the tournament, they came together a little bit earlier. But um, with the with the next one and with the introduction of Johnny Cage, I wonder, correct me if I'm wrong, the original Sub-Zero, he becomes Noob Cyborg, doesn't he? Um, the, the, the original Sub-Zero becomes Noob Cyborg. I thought so he the, the robot and then, like, say, in, like, Milk at 11. Uh, there's that Ice Sheila who was meant to be like the protege of the new Sub Zero. Frost. Uh, Frost. Frost. And she goes and is working with the evil new Cyborg who used to be the original Sub Zero, but died. And then Kano made him a machine. Don't know. The new Cyborg was once known as uh, B Han. Yeah. 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 So I wonder if that's what they're going to do. They're going to try and make him... So, make he'll, the so he'll play a new Cyborg. Yeah, look, they're going to have to, because that Sub-Zero is he's dead. Mm -hmm. He's meant to be his brother that comes back as Sub-Zero, and Noob Cybot's the original Sub-Zero. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway. I think we haven't touched on. Um, what's that? Like, was, the, was the violence of it? Oh, yeah. Was there enough? <laughs> was, uh, uh, I'm, 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 you know, I'm violence... That's I think I think crazy, they man. might have had trouble putting more into it because it was pretty violent. The fatalities, and if they put too much, they might have missed out on their R rating. Yeah, as well. So I don't think they had any had any choice to be honest. Yeah. No, and 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 for those that once again, those that don't follow the Mortal Kombat universe, they're gonna look at the fatalities and and that sort of stuff that's in it, and they're yeah. They're gonna maybe go. That's too much, or as it is. I mean, the Mortal Kombat um, is violent by by its very nature. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> and, 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 the, and the thing that you've got to realise, and I don't think, well, and, and look, I only I, the only reason I even know about it is because well, MKU was started when we were refused MK9 originally, um, refused classification because we didn't have an R rating, but. Mortal Kombat started the rating system in Australia because of its violence in the game back in 92. Um, we, Australia didn't have a rating system and Mortal Kombat came, was released and Australia's going, oh, Jesus, what, what are we going to do? We need to rate this because, you know, kids are going to play it. So that's when yep. they rated it, but we only had up to M15. And then in comes MK9 and that is the cause for Australia's R rating in gaming. So, got to love you, Mortal Kombat. Uh, you know, well done <laughs> for that, for bringing in that to um, our part of the world. But, yeah, it's um, they, it's R18, you know, they, they had to do it. They they needed to do it because the original, you know, it was, you know, it was violent, but nothing like this. This was full-blown Mortal Kombat, and you gotta got to try and look at it as um, from a Mortal Kombat gaming fanatic standpoint and mm -hmm. not go into it trying to compare it to a Hollywood action movie that has just been built from the ground up where this has been trying to port it from video game world to Hollywood world and that's one of the hardest things to damn do so yep. but yeah so no good take um so I guess before we sit, like spend the next hour talking about it yeah, yeah move well, on the next biggest thing in the in the gaming uh atmosphere at the moment is Resident Evil Resident Evil 8 is about to hit the shelves and there was supposed to be a multiplayer like, game coming out, which isn't going to hit the shelves until when, Brash? Well, it's coming out because they've just finished the beta. They've already had the close, and they just finished the other beta mm -hmm. um, that comes with the pre-order of the game. Um, and it's meant to be coming out, I'm pretty sure, along with Village. 
Yes, um, I believe it's uh, at yeah, the same time. At the same time, and I've seen some of the footage from the closed beta of it. Um, and Are we talking about Reverse? Reverse, Reverse. Yeah. Reverse. Uh, not Village at the moment. Um, and it seems like every other multiplayer shooter that every other just a bit generic. game is bringing out right now. Um, however, it is with the same sort of um, gameplay as the Resident Evil game. And for those who haven't played Resident Evil games, and those who have, know how difficult sometimes it is to run around and walk around with the Resident Evil controls. It can be quite like Ninja. So, so I've not played it at all, the beta. What is it? What is it? What is the what is reverse? What is the so premise of it? You basically get your choice of your hero. So there's like you can choose Chris, Claire, uh, Leon, uh, Jill, uh, Ada Wong. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to be throwing some more in there eventually. Uh, and you basically just spawn in like an area, like a factory or a haunted house looking place um just like a big sort of area with different rooms and you just run around and kill each other um each player has like a certain gun layout that you can't change so then chris gets um uh, a little uh his um like assault rifle and a pistol i believe leon gets his pistol and a shoddy um and then they all got their own little special abilities like uh, Claire can throw these, um, like little bear, ball bearing type thing, like this little uh, electric, like electric electrocution device out, and it zaps a person who runs over it. Um, and once you die um, in your pre loadout, you get to choose what zombie you want to turn into, um, depending on how many vials you take during the game. So when you die, you can respawn as a zombie, run around for a little bit longer and try and kill as many people as you can before your zombie dies or it eventually runs out of health because it slowly dies as you play it. So and were they releasing that as a standalone or was that supposed to be part of... Stand, no, oh, it's just standalone. It's just like a... Um, but you can only play of, you know, it if, like, you're pre, if you have what? the game, though. You can't just download Reverse on its own without, not that without not owning Village. Like you can only get it from... Because you, you can get it both in the... I think you can get in all versions of uh, Village pre-order. So I'm, um, yeah, I'm just looking at Resident, because I was wondering that how it ties in with Resident Evil Village, because I've actually got um, a copy of Resident Evil Village coming to me on um, Tuesday, I think. Wait, do you pre-order Collector's Edition or something? No, no, this is... Um, this is coming from one of our um, PR companies. Um, oh, okay. Because they want to, they want me to um, smash it out on the the Raiden uh, 6800 GPU, um, and basically, yeah, just give it a try and it's it's more it's not about the game itself. It's more about trying to because uh, you yeah, know kill this Raiden 6800, see how well it performs with a, a game such as Resident Evil because that's graphically that. It, I'm just looking at some of the, the the screens here and whatnot, and graphically it looks very very heavy on graphics, and um, it's going to need one hell of a GPU to to run it in you know uh, high res, and and I'm assuming ray tracing is going to be there. Uh, I actually don't know much about it's it. It's really good. Like just it, like um, on any platform that I've seen it, just looks like it's <laughs> been built. It's love. the same engine as Seven or an upgraded engine. I think it's the same engine. They've I've done no modifications that. to it. It's just literally the same. Just refined. But yeah, I've got um yeah, because I've got the uh, embargo is <laughs> my yeah. Don't don't um you know embargo and me just don't mix as Lance will be well aware. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I've got the embargo of it'll be uh, one a.m. May six for our time for me. I'm gonna I'll throw up some um. Uh, you know, some gameplay of it and whatnot. Um, so people can have a look at it before because the release is on the 7th. 
Um, and I just don't know if that's that would be the eight hour now in Australia, I believe. Mm-hmm. But yeah. When does the so, game come out? So, Wednesday. Week. Well, it says oh, the, okay. the seventh um, worldwide, but. Um, that's not the seventh. That's not Wednesday. I, I I struggle to under understand these 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 release dates sometimes because it's a you can't have a worldwide release date in the seventh because uh, not the same. It's not the seventh. Um, yeah, it'd be the eighth for us. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah, if it's going off America, I've done it. Yeah, it'll be the eighth. Yeah. So uh, looking yeah, looking at this embargo I've got in front of me here, it's May fifth, eight a.m. Pacific time. So, which is May sixth. Uh, 1 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. So that's mm-hmm. the. So the 8th is a Saturday, though. Yeah, Saturday. Anyway, but, it doesn't um, matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, it, it is what it is. No, I was just, uh, I was just curious uh, with the, yeah, the rebirth. So it's, so rebirth is more of a, uh, add-on. Or... They seem to do yeah, this with every it's, game. It's a... Why do they keep yeah, releasing it's... this weird multiplayer bolt-on? And, and the thing Every is, time like, they they're do, not, they're, not making, they're technically not making any money off of it. Is there any so microtransactions far. in the game? Well, there there probably will be eventually, but at the moment, like the game itself is really free because I bought I bought the super special gold star twenty thousand dollar version of the pre order. Mm-hmm. It was like hundred thirty bucks. And that's pretty much what I pay for every other deluxe edition Superstore brand game that I ever bought. So, so I guess the question like, is, do you care that it's been like, pushed back? Or like, is it yeah. important? Does it affect your overall opinion of the Resident Evil Village launch? No, like, as long as we get Village, I don't really care. But because um, like, I got Biohazard with the... I got Biohazard, mm. Biohazard as well with it. So I got Biohazard, Village, and yeah, okay. the Reverse. Uh, All yeah. right. Like an awful, like a like 130, 140 bucks. I'm like, oh, that's not bad. So, um, and uh, I don't know. Well, and, I, I remember the reverse might just be like a bit of fun to have as long as it runs reasonably well. It'd just be a little bit of fun to have on the side. Yeah, but does yeah. anyone even play the last little bolt on they did? What was the sun that came with seven? Uh, was that Outbreak? I don't know. That's why I don't tell what saying. No one, no one, knows. no one cares. Greg showed it to me. Or was it, the, it might have been actually it might have been the um, uh, operation um, uh, umbrella oper- operation. So this is this is my point. Does anyone even uh, care? Yeah, no yeah, umbrella agents. Yeah. Mm. But um, yeah, like the whole point of it is just like you have to kill as many people as you can. The more people you kill, the more score you get. Whoever gets the highest score at the end of like a, the time limit, because you just keep constantly respawn mm. after you die. The more people you kill, the more points you get. Where there's more points, points at the end wins. So Has Resident general... Evil Village at all been pushed back, or has this just been the only date that they've been given and they're saying this think, is when it's coming out? I think this is always the first the only date. date. Okay. Because yeah. it would be funny if they kept pushing back Village and they could have been working on Village instead of this re, like Reverse game, and the Reverse game hasn't even made it to launch anyway. Yeah, I think that what they've done with Reverse is they've just copied a lot of like what they did with Resident Evil 2 and 3. Because yeah. it looks, it looks so much. It looks impo- like uh, I've seen, I've watched the gameplay of Reverse, and, that, and it just, and we, from what they like, the streamers that were streaming it were saying that like it plays exactly like three, yeah, um, yeah. and it looks exactly like two and three, and all the characters look like the two and three characters. Um, you think this is them like, testing the waters on what they want to do with future releases, or you think this is just a yeah, a side project to that, keep, keep the developers uh, busy. I reckon, I reckon they're just trying to. I reckon they might just be trying to capitalize on more areas, and like anything like, like they're anything not, that's not sort of the original sort of area. Not I think, I think well. they do it to get the pre. I think they do it. They bolt on this little side project to get the pre-orders in. You pre-order it, you get to play this now. Yeah, they do it every time they release a game. Every time. Yeah. There's always a little stupid multiplayer um, add-on. But the thing is, it's, it's Resident Evil. They don't need to. No, it's not a like, multiplayer game. Yeah, no. no, no. Oh, yeah, like, the, only, the only thing I'd like it to be if it was going to do multiplayer is if they made like a like a two-player 
in the game, like they used to do with um, Resident Evil 5, and where, they, where we could play with like a friend. Um, as I think it was Chris and I can't remember what the Sheila's name was when they were in like Africa. Um, yeah. Yeah, and you could play two player, and you're both playing as each of the characters, and you're running around killing zombies and whatnot. So that was good. Five and six but, had the um, co-op. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, that was good. Um, cause I, I used to play like especially five. We used to play five with a mate of mine all the time. Um, but yeah. Just just a multiplayer game in general, like it's gonna get, and it's gonna, and I, it's gonna, and it's gonna attract the wrong people. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Uh, did did anyone have any issues or have been trying to play all the demos? Because I know <laughs> this whole Resident Evil Eight demo situation. Yeah, I was I was going to bring up the fun. demos before we move on because I um, <laughs> I missed out on them all because there's stupid time frames and time limits and. Which weekends I, you can I'm, play? Which, but it's just a joke. Yeah, I mean, I missed out because with the closed beta, you couldn't do it because you know, like you, you only it's like select chosen people could be in the closed beta. I didn't get chosen for that. And then with the beta, um, I think I was also I was playing the. I think that's when I had to do my review for near. So yep. I missed out on the beta, and I'm like. I, I, cause I, it's downloaded on my PlayStation. I'm like, oh sweet, I'll play it. Now that I've got a chance, I went in there. It's like, yeah, it's finished. I'm like, it's only been like a weekend. Hey, <laughs> I just don't understand the reasoning behind it, other than trying to generate really? hype. Yeah, I was, bit, I was about bit, to say like artificial. It's just, it's just hype. you miss out on it. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, I thought that was a bit of a weird thing, but. I guess moving on, like uh, the only other thing that uh, like has been recent that has been, like has been pretty big is was the Rust release on Xbox, which technically is in beta stage. The game Rust itself has been out for about six, seven years, and has had a bit of a resurgence on the Steam community, just in PC in general. There was so many servers that were popping up, and you know, a lot of interest. So it was a really good time for them to release it on console, and it shit the bed. <laughs> Shit the bed. Right. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. Sounds like Johnny Sunday night. We, we spoke about Outriders <laughs> last month about that being a terrible launch, but Rust is a game where, like, you know, survival, like, if you die, you can lose so much stuff. Uh, just trying to stay connected to the game is a little bit more important, whereas in Outriders, if you got connected, besides the major issues they had, but you, mm. try, you try to tackle it, didn't you, Rashi? Or... Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not doing. All right, I got a base. I'm at Stone. Mm-hmm. No, one, no one raided me. Um, I think I, 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 um, I attribute that to the smart play that I put my base right in a the edge of a um, uh, what do you call it? A radiation zone. So if anyone tried to raid me and they didn't have proper protection, they would just start dying. Yeah. <clears throat> the only problem is if I was able to go out and get resources and die then respawning my base without any sort of clothes or outfit then i would die <laughs> that sounds like a pretty <laughs> stupid place to put your house you idiot it, it, it had its drawbacks but um it, it wasn't too bad um but yeah like uh like and i think a lot of the console players some of them are playing it for the first time they don't understand rust i'm never playing there never was so played many rust. there was so many people like complaining about how people were just randomly coming up and killing him and stuff like that and they wouldn't let him build anything I'm like the griefing that, 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 is, that, that is that is why no rust. that no. is why i've never played rust it, it is right like if you don't play it with a group unless you're like unless you're a pro solo player if you don't play with a group then you you might as well just not play it like because you're not gonna get anywhere um but yeah there, there was so many so many like i could only play it 10 minutes at a time before i had to shut it down and start it up again um, I'd come in to the game and like once I built my base, I had it all set up. I, you know, I had to get resources to make sure it didn't get destroyed on me. So I'd run out, go get resources on the way, usually on the way back, like around the 10 minute mark, I'd start rubber banding. Mm-hmm. And then, so I'd have to like, I'd start rubber banding. So then I have to backtrack a bit, go like slightly left and then run forward again to get past this rubber banding area. And then I'd get back to my base, my base would be disappeared. So I'd have to find a nearby shrub 
and then log out and fall asleep in a nearby shrub, close the game, get back into the game, try and find my server, which is a nightmare, even just trying to find your servers. Can your favorite? Uh, can your favorite servers though? No, well, see, I oh. I favorite it, and I go to my favorites, and it wouldn't be there. But then, if I go into the actual server list, there'll be a list coming up, and I'd have to go all the way to the bottom, and just hold down down, and it get to the bottom of the list, and then it'll load the next lot of servers, and then it'll go down, and then it'll load the next lot of servers, and it'll go down. So if you've got any favorites, and it's not in the top part of your list, general list, it wouldn't be there. Even if you wait, it just wouldn't show up. So I had to keep yeah, cycling through the list. Really sounds like I am not going to play that. Yeah, I'm saying <laughs> I, it just sounds like like too much. Um, yeah, I, I'd get back in and I'd respawn in the little shrub outside my house, and my house would be there again. And then I'd go inside my house and offload all my stuff. But if anyone was to come past and just see my body in the bush out front of my house, they'd be like, "Oh, cool!" And then salute me of all the shit I just got, like just around and got. So, yeah, it, it was a bit rough. Like people couldn't connect. Uh, people were blue screening, like on the like. The, this is more so for the PS4s and stuff, I believe. They were like blue screening, um, not so much for like PS5s and the new Xboxes and everything like that. Um, yep. But yeah, there was the connection problems, um, the server lags, um, just oh, even the, like the buildings in the buildings weren't rendered properly. So you'd walk up to a building and like the wall would be glass, so you could see straight through it. But then couldn't go through it, so like the whole building nearly would be glass, except for like, like, like a few more stairs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but um, yeah, so it, it had a yeah very rocky start, and it didn't get any better throughout the whole entire um, like the whole entire beta. Um, I do you feel like we... it's at a stage where you'd want a refund, or you like because it's got the preview tag on it? Are you just gonna push through it and just hope it gets better, or? I am gonna have it a bit up, but to be honest, once I get like once um, I get my computer situation sorted out, I'm probably just gonna be playing on computer, not console. Um, mm. I feel that they can do a lot more on computer than what console could. Yeah. Uh, but I think just as I, it's the same with um, uh, Seven Days to Die and uh, Minecraft and all that kind of stuff on console, like. I can still play them, and they're still fun to play. But yeah, ideally, if I, if I wanted to get hard core into it mm -hmm. like, and like play it seriously, I'd have to probably play. It yeah, I, th I think that I think those are games you, if you're going to take them seriously, you play the yeah. PC version. Which yeah, so it, but if I had like a few friends who had on had on console, I'd jump on just for a bit of fun, like build a base, shoot some people, try and work out how to play music since you can't do it oh, that's the one thing it really pissed me off i got a guitar couldn't play music because um you had to press the r2 button to play the music and then use your sight to change the tone of the guitar and everything like that sight and move so if you're trying to play guitar you're just randomly like looking around and just like moving constantly to try and change the sound of your guitar or anything like that so they need to make work out a better system for music because that's one of the funnest things about it just going around as like a bard trying to play music and then everyone's like, yeah, clear, cheering for you. And then you just pull out a gun and shoot everyone. Like, yeah. <laughs> they got a lot so, of work to do. So, so, I, I don't know yeah, what's with betas like these days. I remember the days when betas were quite good. Yeah, mm. Betas uh, now are just yeah, so like, bad. And the, thi and the thing that um, I've been told, because I wasn't able to play the closed beta, um, apparently the closed beta was 10 times better than the beta. There was like no, um, none of the connection issues. Um, yeah, it was just very minimal issues compared to the actual. That's beta. numbers. Yeah, I, was gonna yeah, say, I, I think, think it's numbers. I think it's the numbers. thing is, that they've got they've got like two hundred servers, and yeah, two hundred servers, and none none of the servers that I saw were ever full. The most I ever saw was maybe half full. Uh -huh. Like, yeah, it's right. rust it cares. Like, cause, yeah. well, it just seems like, like in general games these days are struggling to be made and released on time in and in yeah. full um i mean like that and, that's a nice segue to the next topic as well could very well happen to the next call of duty there's leaks online about the name of it which it's pretty much all but confirmed it's call of duty vanguard 
hopefully going to be a sequel to the World War II game that was released three years ago before Modern Warfare. Uh, there was rumors that it's not even close to being done. Uh, Activision have pulled a couple of their other studios off, like studios off, to help them try and deliver something this year. I mean, there's there's also rumors that they're releasing the Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer side of it remastered. They released the actual campaign with the Modern Warfare game two years ago. Um, everyone was screaming for it, but I mean, there's so many Call of Duties, you try not to split the community behind it. If they don't deliver a game this year, that's going to break their 16-year streak of you know, a, a new release every single year of Call of Duty entry. Like, do you think it's merited? Do you think it's time to have a break? Or you, you think you want break. to push it through? Yes, Chuddy. What do you think, Chuddy? You're a big COD player. I am a big COD player, but uh, yeah, I'd just give it a break. <laughs> we don't need one every year. Mm. I don't understand. I, what, I don't, what I don't get is this, this game went from a year production cycle to three. And it's mm -hmm. the games have got been worse. More they've spent three years on a COD game, and they either don't get finished still, or they're shit, or there's something wrong with them. Mm -hmm. Compared to when they were doing them every year, and they were amazing games: Black Ops, Modern Warfare's one year life, one year um, dev cycle on them, compared to three now, and they're all trash. Mm. You're right, I don't understand that. I don't get it. Three, what are they doing? Not, three years I and they're pumping out understand. rubbish. Like, I know Assassin's Creed had that. Assassin's Creed was a yearly thing, and, and it started to get to the point where people were just almost begging not for, for another game to come out, and they took that break and came back with Origins and reinvented the entire thing. Like, I know Modern Warfare has reinvented it, but what if they took two years off COD? Do you think COD Warzone would be able to keep them going? Because they get a shit ton of money from that. Probably, they're probably one of the most profitable To be honest... Yeah, I don't know. Look, I've seen them. I've I've been following COD Mobile, and they seem to be pumping a lot of time into COD Mobile compared to their AAA COD on consoles. COD Mobile and Warzone, they seem to be focusing quite heavily on, which is probably why they're not finishing these other games. Mm -hmm. yeah, like I play Cold War a lot, and like even like there's no party games or anything on there, like one in the chamber or gun game no. anymore. They bring it in for a couple of weeks and then they take it out. It's just like, well, they're the what? best part of those games. Gun like, game, um, gun game. What's that other one that they keep adding in there? Um, the sticks and stones they've got now. They put that in there, but I don't know. It's, the hide yeah, and seek one they keep putting in and out all the time. What's that one called? Prop hunt. Uh, oh, like that. The, prop, the prop hunt. Prop yeah. hunt. They keep taking in and putting it in and out all the time. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. They do take out all the fun stuff, like. Why can't they just have it all in there? Leave it there. 2v2 is probably the best thing to come from it. <laughs> yeah, and now, and now other games are starting to copy that because I saw um, Apex is doing 3v3. Yeah, the legacy. Concept oh, okay. of COD. Yeah, it's exactly the same as Gunfight. 3v3, though. <laughs> exactly the same. I'm no good at Apex. So yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'll check it out. I'm going to check it out again. I'll check it out. I'll check that out. I hate Apex though. You love Apex. Oh god, it's trash. There's a question about it, but like if if they took a cop out, see I don't know how much of a cop out is because it's still a lot of work, but if they remastered Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, which is the 2009 release, would you pay 50 bucks for that? You know, how much are you willing to pay for that considering it's only multiplayer? I don't mind. I don't mind paying for a remaster of something, but I don't like to pay for all the map packs again because I've already paid for them on the three sixty or whatever it was. But they charge you again for the maps. I know they got to remaster the maps too, but I've already paid for these maps. They should just make like a flat rate for remaster is basically the whole entire what that game was remastered. Or remaster. Yeah, that's right. They should release the game in its full, including all of the DLC. You put your, all the DLCs as and a then, remaster. Yeah, correct. Yeah, that was a solid awesome. damn game. Like, How did they do the Call of Duty 4 remake? Because I know the Call of Duty 4 remake launched with Infinity War. You had to buy Infinity War to get that. But I couldn't remember if they did Infinite every Warfare. single map. Was it like a uh, limited? No, it was only, they only did the... Um, they didn't do DLC with that, did they? No, they released DLC. 
after the yeah, fact. Later. Which is yeah. most likely what they'll do again. Yeah. I don't know. Look, the last couple of CODs have just put me right off it, and I just don't play it anymore, so... Mm -hmm. It needs a break, yeah. otherwise I'm just going to dabble into it, and then not play it again. I don't agree with Juddy on a lot of things, but I agree with him this time. I think they should give it a break. And I play COD a lot, but I just think, I think it just needs a break. Try well, that's and what, that's a annoyed bit. me about it. I didn't get into Modern Warfare immediately after it came out. Because I was a bit burnt out on Call of Duty, and by the time I did get into it, uh, I think it was like three, four months, and then the next uh, next game's like coming out. So, do I buy any DLC like in that? Like, do I start investing in that? I don't even think there was much DLC, was there? It, well, I had the battle pass. They thing, only had right. How did they do it? How did they do the DLC season passes? I can't I even remember. I, don't can't... I think it was just you had to buy the. Yeah, it wasn't, seat, like, um... It took a while before they started doing season passes and stuff. No, wait, the maps were all free. That's what they were doing. They were adding yep, all the maps, maps for free. free you had to buy like, the could, progression pass. You could buy the battle pass, pass if you wanted to, but all content was added for free, which is which is good. Which yep. is good. Everyone else is doing it, so it's about time COD did it. Yep. Mm, mm. So I stopped buying battle passes as well for that though. <laughs> yeah. It's it's too hard to keep up. Like it it's taken away from that. You used to be able to pick up Call of Duty, play it like you know for a, like a solid day or whatever, whatever, and you can come back in three weeks and you haven't really missed out on anything. But if you buy battle passes these days, you feel like oh I got to put a lot of significant amount of time in this to make sure and I can Cod's, get to level hundred. Cod's battle pass is a grind. Yeah, Freaking like there's a grind. lot of work you got to put into that, and if you take two three weeks off, which happens to a lot of us as adults, <laughs> um. You you feel like you you like uh, should I even buy this? Whereas previously you'd buy a season pass and you'd get those maps forever. Now you got to buy something and then and you've got to, you've got three months to use it and level it up. Otherwise it's gone. You got to start again. So that's, that's the interesting. They bring out the DLC is stupid too. Like they they'll bring out new maps, but they won't bring out like a new zombie map or something like they have recently. But there's mm. been a lot of times where the new season comes in and you're like, oh, sick, I'll play the new zombie map. It's not even there. It's, just, yeah, it's they because they bring it out bring progressively. Out the They're like, new yeah. season, but you get to play it all over three months. We'll bring out your zombie map in two months' time. Yeah. Stupid. New season, yeah. just drop the DLC. Drop it, it might on. be a good year for them to take a break, especially if Battlefield 6 actually is coming out this year. Mm. Yes, so, yes. They don't have to compete with sales. They can just... It's not confirmed that yet, is it? I don't think it'll come out this year. Yeah, Battlefield's this year. It is? Yeah. Uh, they have they confirmed it, it for this year, but they have not confirmed what it is. Yep. Yeah. Kurt, as a pro COD, an ex pro COD player, <laughs> do you think, uh, what, what would it take you to play another COD? What would it take you to get back uh, into playing COD? Because we used to play a lot of Call of Duty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know, you were, I, know you, I know you were, I know you were, sorry, an ex-pro, an ex-pro, really, you were good at it. The last time I really played COD was literally Xbox 360 days. Yes. Um, it just, I don't know, I, I just lost interest in it because it was, for me, it felt like it was more of the same, always more of the same. Um, that always, to me, is what COD felt like in this, all this battle pass, season pass, bullshit, um, just can't. I can't get around it because every game is doing it now. Like, I mean, dead set. How many, how many subscriptions does one person need? Um, for me to get back into COD, I'd like to just see some, like yeah, your Modern Warfare too, the the campaign style. Yeah, the, give me some good campaigns because look, I, I don't know, I've always my lack of time. My campaigns are good because you just pick it up, play, and just then drop it and come back to it weeks later. Multiplayer, bring back the old, I guess the old school multiplayer, as you want to call it, where none of this battle pass crap. I mean, I know these companies are going to make money. Otherwise, if they're not making money, they can't make games. If they don't make games, then we all go cry in the fetal position somewhere. Um, but, yeah, uh, a decent, yeah, just a, a, even a bare bones multiplayer. Something where you'd 
just want to go in and you know, just play, you know, I don't know. I, do I, I don't play multiplayer. Like, uh, yeah, like would you, yeah, would you roll that? I'd love to see a lot of a lot more co-op style as well. Co-op is I guess there's not much call for it in the industry, um, because you don't see it very much. Um but to see some sort of co-op um and not just like a two person co-op, like go for three, four, you know, even five and six co-op sort of style. I mean, uh what was it? Gears of War did good co-op back in the day. Um Lance and I played that mm. to death. Um, I think they still co-op. do co-op, don't they? I think you can still play Gears. No, you still can, yeah. yeah um yeah. but we I mean the last time I played any co op was um was Legos <laughs> Legos. <laughs> well, you know, that's I a good co op my youngest. Um, you know, the only time I play co op is with him, I you know, because he's yeah, he, he he's actually and with any interest to do that. But um yeah, look campaign co op. Um, and just stop trying to make multi, stop trying to reinvent the wheel of multiplayer. And I get that they, you know, the servers would cost an absolute mozza to run to be able to have, you know, you got half the world waking up and they want to play. So you got to keep that ping time down low. They need servers everywhere. They need, well, that's a ridiculous amount of money to do that. But surely now we must, there must be, I don't know. There's got to be something, uh, technology that can use to bring that pricing down for them and just, yeah, go a bare bones multiplayer. Like, so here's, here's, my, here's my idea, right? I reckon they should leave the COD games to the campaign. Like release a campaign Call of Duty once a year, twice or once every mm-hmm. two years or whatever. And in Warzone, have that your Battle Royale. This is all free to play, Warzone, free to play as it yep. is. Battle Royale, and then I know they do a smaller... Battle Royale mode, I believe. Juddy, do you play Warzone? Yeah, I'm they looking do. at you because um, I don't, I don't know. Map. So they do a smaller version of Warzone, but even put in there, you know, just like a, a multi, a bit of multiplayer and gunfight type of thing. Just keep Warzone for the multiplayer and a free to play app. Put their battle passes and shit in there to make their money, like they do with COD Mobile, because COD Mobile is free and they make a shit ton of money off all their crates and battle passes. Turn that into Warzone into its console equivalent to mobile and just keep the campaigns for their yearly releases. That'd work. Instead of jamming. Like, like if they sell like the skins for guns and new skins for your character <laughs> and emblems and all that kind of stuff, if they sell that, then. Yeah, keep doing that. Just money. put it in like they yeah. do now COD Mobile and Warzone. Just keep Warzone their multiplayer portion, free to play, but you can spend money on packs and bundles and battle passes and. And if if you want to, and if not, you can just play the game. I just think that's why these aren't getting complete. Is because they're focusing so heavily on Warzone, so they're not getting the multiplayer stuff done in the main game. Yep. All they need to know is give it a break. It's give it a break. To... Reset. Put Chatty on. Put Chatty in there on char- in charge. I thought of that. Shoot an and email to make... Activision, Kurt. Say, wait, we've got a guy here. <laughs> He knows what he's talking about, all right? Just listen to him. Just just take a break. He might have a filthy yeah. look at moustache, but he knows what he's on about. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, well, like, I guess that wraps up what we're doing there. I guess the last thing we should do before we like finish up, I mean, E3 is a month away. Uh, like we've talked about games, you know, like uh, what, what they want, we want to do with Call of Duty, what we want to do with Resident Evil, all these other ones. But is there anything that anyone wants to see in the new E3 like that? We want to start the rumor mill now. GTA Six. <coughs> GTA Six. Shadi wants to see a new. He wants to hear a new GTA announcement. Do you think that'll happen though? Nah, I reckon. Nah. I reckon. I, I can nearly put so. money on it. I reckon twenty twenty two will have an announcement. Twenty three will have a game. Nah, no way, dude. They never announce a game with a release of a year later. Uh, Rockstar, don't they always announce something yeah. and then, like, three years down the track, it finally comes out? Yeah, I think how long was Red Dead Two? Yeah, was a while. Hyped up for years. So yeah, nothing Red but screenshots Red Red for so campaign long. Campaign trailers three years for that. How, how about just a uh, a public playable beta or even a closed beta of Diablo Four? Give me that. Yeah. I'll, yeah. Be, I'll be in heaven. <laughs> Have you been playing uh, the mobile version? 
Immortals. No, no. I'm, it's actually pretty good, I, dude. This is all about playing the um. Oh, you know Steam. what? Mobile stuff's going sick, dude. Diablo Immortals, Call of Duty Mobile. Cup PUBG is actually decent Diablo. on the mobile now instead of the console. Yeah, the mobile announcement. Oh, that, I remember that one too. That was fantastic. Um, but yeah, now I've been playing the seasons on PlayStation because um, that's where I've had my character built up. And yeah, just playing um, the seasons um, on Diablo 3. And then they've got the Diablo 2 remastered version coming out to which look, remaster, reboot. I don't know. Send it to the I don't know recycling bin as far as I'm concerned. Like that, it's remastering crap. Just don't. So I don't know. There's a game that I want remastered because it'll just um, need for speed. Um, I just need that remastered. Which the, one? Um, most wanted. Oh yeah. <clears throat> I just need it remastered. What was the one they recently remastered? Um, they did a hot pursuit, but it hot was pursuit? nothing like the original. Yeah. Is that yeah. the recent one? No, it's not the uh, recent one. No, no, what's the recent one they remastered? Oh, um... Yeah, you, you're right, Hopper Suit. It was Hopper yeah. Suit. Oh, right. Yeah, which was yeah. the original name of the original one. But oh, yeah, yeah, no, it was. The 2004 yeah. Need for Speed Most Wanted was Yeah, Most awesome. Wanted was amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that, that was a fantastic game. Game. That was a good game. So I did that, I'd be happy. And then they can end the remastered. So you want remastered Need for Speed at GTA 6? Yeah, I'd be happy. <laughs> okay, Kurt wants Diablo Four announced, or or well, not announced, but um, that, yeah. you want some uh, playable beta? Would be you want something playable? Um, what else do you want? What else you want to hear about? Uh there's a there's a right now. I don't know. I I, sh I should have looked into it, and normally I would have. But there was um I read some rumors that um uh, what was it God of War was coming to oh, PC. Yeah. Oh, okay. Wouldn't surprise um, me. Sony seemed to be doing the PC thing now with everything. Yeah, it was God of War, and there was one other um, Sony exclusive. Um, can't remember now what it was. Days Gone. Uh, Days Gone. Supposed know. to be coming to PC. I don't know. As soon as I read God of War PC, I'm like, that, my mind just that's it. That nothing else mattered because I have God of War on PlayStation. I have restarted and finished that five times now you should see um, it on ps5 i would love to but you can't Ooh. buy those bastards anyway <laughs> um so bring it to me on pc because uh the pc will graphically will destroy ps5 anyway but um but yeah it's um I, look I, I honestly i'd like to just see some some game announcements or release dates or something of games that are actually going to come out complete be yeah, lovely. it seems to be um, Switch 4K or something. I don't know. It seems to be pretty quiet on game front, doesn't it? Even with um, mm -hmm. no idea what's even in the works. So I don't know it's what they're going to announce at all. You still got COVID going hell for leather over in the states. Though. See over here, you know, it's we're lucky. We're actually very lucky over here. Um, but in the states, it's still very hard to work. So you got all these, mm. um, you know, all the developers and all that sort of stuff. You know. All these guys and girls on the grounds that are doing making these games, they're trying to work in massive teams from home, and it's it would that would be very hard on these games to try and you know nut out some of these bugs. So, even like a lot of movies are coming over here now. Can't remember what it was in yeah, the news, but I think Australia's getting one of the biggest movies they've ever filmed. Here. Everything's been filmed here. I just watched last night. That Netflix movie, Love and Monsters. I don't know whether anybody's... So good. It's so, so good. And it was all filmed in Brisbane. Oh, really? Yeah. The whole oh, thing was filmed here. Adelaide, not South Australia. Yeah. So, um, you know. And I think The Rocks yeah, show... The that, Rocks... that Marvel movie, um, what's his name, The Ten Rings. Um, the Kung Fu Marvel movie. It's got the Mandarin in it. Oh, it got shot. That's Shang Tsung, is it? Shang Tsung, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Shang... Yeah, Shanks. Yeah, Shanks was a lot. Yeah. And I think um, that Rocks movie, Young Rock, or whatever his name is, that that show's yeah. called. It was filmed in the Gold Coast. Like everything's coming in. Yeah, Everything. So, but, well, I suppose that's, that's good for us, but also um, could be potentially problematic. With more people coming over here. What about but, you, Brash? What like what do you want? What games. E uh, three. Uh, what do you want? Nothing to hear? That's gonna, no, nothing's going to be there. But like um. I want a couple of 
remakes that um that uh, <laughs> we, need, we need new ip dude, we need to i'm 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 going for like uh kenna and um like the new horizon game and oh yeah We'll see more um, the of that. new Harry Potter game, like that new Harry Potter game, even looks fucking good. I'm not that big of a Harry Potter fan, but it still looks good and I want to play it. Uh, who doesn't mm. want to be with it? Like killing people with their wands. But um, the, um, the guys who did the remake for Demon Souls, mm-hmm. um, I want them to do a remake of um, Legend of Dragoon. Because it's one of the ones that they were like, oh yeah, we might do that. And then they came out with Demon Souls. And I'm like, oh. Come on, mm. you guys. Legend of Dragon. I've got that on my PS3, but like, I want, I want a new one. I want a new one really badly. Yep. Um, even um, uh, with the new remaster of, or remaster slash remake composition of the new Nier game, or of the old Nier mm. game, um, of doing Drakengard and doing a remake of Drakengard, which is the original game that caused the new games yeah since it's a spin-off from the new games and i used to play dragon i played dragon guard and it was such a great game and along with like near and it it was the most unique game of its time i believe of all the games that came out in that era like it was yeah. a game that like made you question what you were doing like you were essentially just a mass murderer mm-hmm. and like it made you really like feel like I'm just slaughtering all these people for what? And then the new games came out and then made you like question like you're killing all these things and at the end like they were the souls of the human race that you just were slaughtering through the whole game and you're like oh I'm mm-hmm. the bad guy and it's like yeah it just makes you like the whole thing you're like yeah, yeah slash mode I kill and at the end like you're an like, emo- oh. emotional journey <laughs> game so yeah. And so like, okay, so well, so far the wish list is sequels, remakes, subby. Well, 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 well. Look, Battlefield. I miss a good Battlefield game. The last two games were okay, but <coughs> not not great. I agree with that. Not great. Battlefield Four. I could still happily jump into and play. Amazing game. Battlefield Bad Company. We kind of need something like that. Would be great. So I'm looking forward to hearing more about what this battlefield is because all we know it is called battlefield no idea what it is yeah so that i want to hear and see a little bit more of other than that i just want netherrealm to just mess up justice 3 where is it it's, it's yeah it's released the damn thing come on it's been forever yeah. it seems like they're working on mk11 for way way longer than usual they're still talking yeah. about another combat pack that's coming out possibly oh, Rumors of another one more combat pack is supposed to still come out. Mm. And I'd love to say another Mortal Kombat because I'm kind of getting a little bit bored of three. I guess I still still play it all the time, but that's not yep. going to happen. Justice three. So let's just announce it. Let's just see it. <coughs> um, I think I think Microsoft is set to have a big year. It's like they've bought what twenty mm. studios now, mm. like, and we only know what half of them are doing. So I'm hoping that we actually get new things announced. Scalebound was probably the like one of the most exciting games that I think was announced about Xbox and they got cancelled. Because Xbox is what? They're just really shooting games. That's really about it. They've got um, they've seemed they've got a bit lazy with their game, first party games and they've gone, you know what, let's just buy all the studios that they've made yep. the games. I think I just hope I think that's what makes they're doing. A new fantasy genre that is gonna be fun to do because it looks like they were trying to do that with Scalebound and there was a lot of issues, but um, I mean, Halo's going to be there, Halo, but that, that's, again, another sequel. Like, I'm just sick of seeing something that <laughs> I want to see something weird and out there. Returnal, what uh, what Brash mm. is playing at the moment, that's the type of thing that's awesome. You know, I, I give, see it, more things like that I, I give it to Sony. They do they do make some good first-party stuff. Yeah, that, like that, Sony's that's got a, that's all those studios sorted, like, and yeah, I want to see, a, like, for me, I just want to see something, like, a good fantasy thing, because I've, I've been playing so many futuristic shooters lately. <laughs> just something, something to break the mold a bit. I'd like a new Fable. Well, weren't they, well, there is a new Fable. Yeah, right weren't now. they doing that? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Well, I'm I'm people on, on, on Xbox. 
Fox, which is really annoying for me. But yeah. yeah. Um, people that made Forza Horizon, the three and four, and, and... that company is the one that's um, making the new Fable. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, new Fable. Um, I think they were talking about have you bad at PUBG? PUBG two? No. There's also a PUBG two. Yep. They're, they're yeah, out there, you just don't hear about them for some reason. I don't I don't know. Why mm-hmm. make PUBG two and just not like try and blend it into the first one? But I don't know. I don't when it comes to BR games, I don't know why they just don't do the Warzone thing. It's just just keep building on Warzone or just keep like, yeah. Just PUBG, just, yeah, yeah, just have a story to the map, or, or like do, Fortnite. Do like Apex thing, just make new maps and just have some sort of weird storyline that link the new map or some shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, but anyway, PUBG two is apparently happening. Horizon Zero Dawn two, I think you mentioned that. What else is supposed to be? Uh, I just don't know. I don't know what's Far Cry six. Yeah, but I suppose yeah. that was hard. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I'm looking I, forward I, to finding out what Elden Ring is about. Elden Ring, the, that's yeah, that was yeah, one they just from, have shown nothing on. Has is it? Elden yeah, Ring? from software, like they've yeah. been dictating that for a while. Elden you know, Ring. I just get on uh, God of War Ragnarok, actually. Oh, really whatever like that it makes it. I think yeah. it is Ragnarok. Is that this year or next year? Next year? Well, it's supposed to be this year. Oh, this year. All right. Yeah, it was meant to be this year, but I don't think it will. I think it'll be next year for sure. But and the Ragnarok name was—I don't know if that was even confirmed. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, Ragnarok. I think it is. Yeah. Um, that I reckon that game is going to dominate this entire generation. Like that, if they keep that story going, there's oh, so Kratos, much things. Kratos, yep, it's going. Yeah, Kratos, Kratos got between no what he Kratos does, got but... between now and then to get a PS5. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know. Well, that's going to be on PS4. I've got a PS4 Pro. I no, I think I think they're finally ditching them now. This Returnal is only PS5. That just came out. I think Sony are now... Well, how about they it. put some enough hardware on the market for people to buy before they start ditching their old consoles? <laughs> I know, but they're already doing it. Returnal's the first one. Like, and my, at least Microsoft, you can buy the S Xboxes, Xbox Series S. Mm. Um without too much hassle. The mm. Series X is, you know, it's like p- trying to find unicorn shit, really. Um, I just found some of that the other day. What do you mean? <laughs> and the PlayStation 5, like, before they start ditching or dropping support for the older, for the PS4, get, make sure there's stock there to buy. Like Dad said, it's, I know it's a global shortage and that's, you know, it's not Sony's fault. Um, it's not Microsoft's fault, but yeah, at least support the people who have still got your older hardware. Um, There's still people that pre-ordered it. I, I, I still reckon won, who don't have it. Yeah, this is a conspiracy theory, but I still reckon that Sony has a huge stock, or they're they're at the moment stockpiling a whole bunch of PS5s, and either at E3 or at one of the, when they do their own sort of release of uh like one of their big titles that are coming out later on in the year. I reckon they're gonna be like. Hey guys, this is coming out next week, and also fifty thousand more consoles. Mm. Right. And that's their yeah. whole announcement. That's, that's the whole all. That's all they got. Yeah, we got more consoles. <laughs> and just like, dish them out. Three minute buddy thing. Right. Here's uh, a here's a showcase uh, of all the games we could be working on. Yeah. Surprise! Like it's exactly it's exactly what my chain of thought was. I didn't think it would be this long, and and it's yeah. the the drought last, thinking. but. I said I was going to get the PS5 when new God of War comes out. And at this stage, it might look like maybe my only choice. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about it. Dude, you're not yeah, missing out on anything, to be honest. Uh, I bought mine. With the PC Master, I, I bought mine, played mine Morales. I've never used it since. There's just no games for it. Until now, Eternal, there's been no games to play on it. Well, but you can play that on any other console. You are subject. There's some bald kid out there waiting for his, and you got it sitting on the shelf. Just sitting there gathering oh. dust. I just dusted it off yesterday, actually. <laughs> it's gonna, it's gonna boot up an old uh, PS4 game on it. All right. Well, keep in mind of time. Like I, th- I think yeah. we've covered a fair bit of topics yeah, and had a lot of back, which perfect. is good. Um, you can check out MKAU and you also the merch store. I'm sure Savvy's gonna put some. Links in there for everyone to check out. Yep, we've got a, like, a whole bunch of people in here. Every, like people stream. You're getting back in streaming, are you, Judy? 
Yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, yeah. Got to fill that shelf behind you as well. Yeah, yeah I got <laughs> stuff. <laughs> no, leave it like that. Leave it like that. It's a talking point for your streams. Hmm. <laughs> I want to get those signs. Have, have some goals like, of like, you know, subs. It's what, what you put in the back. Just, just have like a post post office box thing and just be like, hey guys, send me, all your, send me as much random shit as you can and I'll put it on this shelf behind me. <laughs> I'll literally end up with just... You got a nice spot yeah. in the back corner there for a movie huge. Where? Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in. This has been NKAU Season 3, Episode 5. Thanks. Thanks. See you guys. Yeah. See you.